Hi everyone, I would like to talk to you about pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis. Uh, it is a form of urinary tract infection, but you need to act fast. So it's a kind of emergency situation when anyone has pyelonephritis. Okay, let's go. Acute pyelonephritis is the infection of the renal parenchyma with a source from either urethra or bladder ascending or to the kidneys. That is not the only way to get it anyway. It may also be directly to the target organs, in other words to the kidneys, through bloodstream. The causative agents I give uh, pneumonia keeps K E E P P S S, and that stands for Klebsiella enterococcus fecalis, Essentia coli, Enterobacter, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus saprophyticus, Proteus mirabilis and Pseudomonas originosa. The risk factors here are kidney stone, otherwise known as nephrolytiasis, catheterization, kidney surgery, reflux, impaired immunity like someone on chemotherapy, steroids and overwhelming infection including HIV. When someone has kidney stone, there's blockage. And when there is stasis, then the bacteria will start growing, multiplying. Catheterization because you are bringing in foreign uh, agents into the system and most cases, many people on catheterization for many days will come down with urinary tract infection. When kidney surgery is performed, anything may happen, including damage to nearby organs and post infection, I mean post surgical infection. Reflux in many cases when there is uh, obstruction. You know, to the flow of the rhino and it's flowing back up. So, an impaired immunity, we all expect our body to be able to fight some of these microbes, but when immunity is down because you're on chemotherapy, you're on steroids, and you have some infections like HIV, then the jam will be able to thrive. Also, benign prostatic hypertrophy, prostatic carcinoma, cholesterol teacher, all of them will cause stasis of the urine. And that will allow for the growth of the bacteria. Short urethra, like in females, the urethra is very short, so any infection uh, along the perineum, the microbes along the perineum can easily ascend all to the bladder and to the kidney. And that accounts for the reason why most times females do have urinary tract infections like pyelonephritis and the rest more than males because males have longer urethra. Diabetes mellitus because it's going to show down immunity. The same in pregnancy and neurogenic bladder. Neurogenic bladder because there is no adequate uh, drainage. There's paralysis somewhere. 
The clinical features here will be urgency, person won't be able to hold the pill, you know, just having reason to go to uh, washroom quickly. A frequency will be going to washroom, toilets, giant, depending on which part of the world you had the name you gave it there. Hematuria, when you see blood in your urine, there'll be fever, nausea, vomiting, pain could be at the flank, the abdomen, okay. pain. And when we do what we call costal vertebral angle tenderness, it's going to be positive. There could also be chills, muscle pain, pause in the urine, and painful urination, pain while pain, rigors, which means your body is shaking, and everything will occur very fast, less than 24 hours. That's makes it an emergency situation. It's acute, but it's an emergency situation because you need to act very fast. Investigations that will be done here will be pregnancy test for women of childbearing age. Um, not only because pregnant women do have urinary tract infection more than the rest, women but simply because some of the medications you might want to choose to treat this woman some of them are not okay in pregnancy so you want to save the baby and help the woman so be sure she's not pregnant because if she's pregnant you can choose some other medications that will be safe in pregnancy you do urine analysis to see what you can pick and urine microscopy culture and sensitivity to get the type of causative agent and the type of drug they are sensitive to. We'll talk more about that in a bit. You do complete blood count and differential. The ultrasound to see what's happening to the bladder and the kidney then you can do CT scan. But in most centers where we don't have the luxury of all these gadgets, you can easily diagnose this clinically. Just from the history and uh, physical examination, you can arrive at tentative diagnosis and empirical management. The treatment here is considered whether this patient is stable or not. A stable patient that is not vomiting, well, starts with intravenous medications and later plays on by oral medications. But if this person is unstable hemodynamically, which means the blood pressure is down, is unconscious or confused or you know, all the likes, you admit. Give IV fluid, give your intravenous antibiotics. Choose antibiotics like Tazosin 3.3, 75 gram every six hours. Or you can choose captriazone intravenously one gram once a daily. Ciprofloxacin 400 milligram twice daily. Levofloxacin 750 milligram once daily. Remember, I said the other time that you're going to rule out pregnancy in a child-bearing woman. Like in this case, now you cannot give ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin for a pregnant woman, but if you do your microscopy culture and sensitivity and it comes out that there is methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus or 
extend the spectrum beta lactam is here, then you can change the direction to imipenem 500 milligram RV every six hours with vancomycin 15 milligram per kilogram every 12 hours. The complications here are emphysematous pyelonephritis. If that is the case, you give your intravenous antibodies. Refer to nephrologists who will likely perform nephrectomy. There's possibility of urinary tract obstruction. And in that case, you can do percutaneous nephrostomy with tube and stenting. In conclusion, we are going to go over the entire urinary tract infection in details very soon, and I will just implore you to watch out. Thank you for watching my presentations. Kindly subscribe to my channel so that you can get these presentations as soon as they are published. Thank you.